What's up, resellers? I'm Rebecca, and you're watching Rebecca the Reseller. Thanks for joining me today for another Poshmark closet review, one of the favorite, most favorite videos I have to do. I love doing Poshmark closet reviews, and this is for Brandy. So thank you, Brandy, so much for purchasing a closet review. And for anyone that is watching, if you're interested in getting your own custom closet review just like this one, check out the link down below to my Etsy shop. You can find one there. So again, thank you, Brandy, for purchasing this. I'm excited to share with you. I reviewed your closet just a few minutes ago, um, You know, compiled all of my notes here, and I do have the summary for you. So you'll be getting the summary as along with the video. And I have some things to say, um, but I do appreciate, you know, your support of my channel and support of me by purchasing one. And I hope that providing you with some of these areas of improvement will bring you much success in your sales. So starting off, like I always do with the closet name field, you are called Bad Bettys. <laughs> and I see you here. I don't know if this is maybe you and your mom, you and a family member, you and a friend, or maybe you are the more mature woman and you're with your daughter. I don't know. <laughs> but either way, it's nice to see the two of you there. It's a nice photo. And so I guess you're the Bad Bettys together. So it's fine that you want to call your closet, you know, your username is Brandy Ann P, then you're calling your closet the name Bad Bettys. My big thing here is if you start your name with an exclamation point, you will show up higher in the results of followers. And so if someone clicks on someone's followers and they see you there, you'll go higher if you're in the excla you know, if you have an exclamation point at the beginning of your name. And that just helps you get more followers and have more reach and just builds up your closet that way. So is it something you have to do? No, it's just something that I've always done. I learned that, you know, little hack early on and I felt like it has effortless, effortless oh my God, effortlessly <laughs> brought me more followers without me having to do anything. And you never know when those followers will become one of your customers. So that's my first thing. The second thing is the banner. It looks great. And I looked at it earlier. It was actually like uh, more condensed maybe because I had the I had put two windows side by side when I do the closet review notes. And so it looked a little bit smaller. So I think it's like a pile of sweaters or a pile of scarves or something like that. So it's something fashion related and really with banners, as long as it's not something detracting, it's fine. It can be anything. Some people have sunsets. Some people have them. Some people have pictures of closets and clothes, like whatever it is, most of the time it's fine as long as it's one thing and it isn't terrible thing. So if you have a banner at home in your closet, um, you know, for those that are watching and it's a hot mess and looking kind of crazy, those are the kinds of things that are no good. But as long as it's a photo of something semi-related to something, it's fine. So I do think it's great that you say that you're a Poshmark ambassador in the information line. However, I would encourage you to say a little bit more. If you can fit Posh ambassador along with how many items you've sold and that you ship same or next day, if you do, which I think you do, because we'll talk about your shipping status in a moment. I think that that gives people a little bit of buyer confidence about you've sold several items, you ship the same next day. It just kind of lets people know some additional information about buying with you that may help them feel a little bit better about this online transaction. Because again, it's all about boosting buyer confidence so that they feel good about purchasing with you. Many people that have purchased on Poshmark, including myself, have gotten burned by people that don't respond to offers. People don't ship the item in a timely manner, let alone at all sometimes. People don't ship you the thing that you thought you were getting. <laughs> so there's a lot of bad blood sometimes that you kind of have to overcome when you're a good seller. And so by letting them know you're a Posh Ambassador, telling them you've shipped X amount of items and telling them that you ship same or next day will just kind of help them know these things. So that's my recommendation on your info line. Your avatar is just the picture, again, of the two of you here. So that's great. I love that. It lets people know that they're buying from a person. You have a link to your Instagram. That's totally fine. Again, I don't get into going into all of the Instagram, but it's nice that you have it. Hopefully it's something like you have there, Brandy and P underscore Poshmark. So it seems like it's Poshmark related. So that's good. For your all-time number of listings, you're at 806, which is a great number. So that's like a nice size closet. I don't know how many of those are active, but as I was scrolling through, it seemed like a good amount and shows that, that you have sold a good amount as well as have a good amount active. 
So my recommendation is to just set a milestone for yourself of a thousand listings and work toward getting it. Set a date when you want to get there by. Right now I'm working towards my 10,000 listings. So it's definitely nice to have a milestone and something to shoot for and maybe a deadline if that's something that would motivate you. Of course, if you're looking to increase your sales, you want to increase your listings. So I'm not exactly sure how many listings per day you are doing, but the main goal here is that Whatever you're doing, if you're unhappy with the results of doing that, increasing the productivity and the activity that you do should then also result in an increase in your output, which is your sales. So if you're listing five a day now, consider listing seven a day and see how that goes. If you're listing 10 a day now, try listing 12 a day and see how that goes and incrementally go up from there. Recently, I set a challenge for myself and then I shared it on Instagram and some people said they were going to do it with me is that pretty much over the next several months, I'm going to increase from 10 listings a day to 25 listings a day by going up two or three listings every month. That way it's not so drastic where I go from 10 today and then say tomorrow, I'm just gonna start doing 25 listings a day. Like that's a major change in your routine and in your day. So maybe I could do it, but I probably wouldn't be setting myself up for success doing it like that. So I'm about incremental change. So if you want to increase your sales, consider incrementally increasing your listings. And my general rule of thumb, is you know if you're trying to get 10 sales a day let's say then you should be listing 20 items at the minimum 10 items if you're trying to get five sales a day you should be listing 10 items at minimum five items like whatever is the same number or double that is what you should be listing to account for a full sell through or a 50 percent sell through of what you listed that week and so that doesn't work for everyone you could list 10 items today and then only sell two a day that's possible but for me, those are the numbers that work for my business, and that's just kind of what I share with other people. You have to see what ratio is, um, you know, works for you. As far as your shares go, you're at 34,000, so that's fine. I mean, community, community sharing is one of those things where if it's important to you to be out there and social in the community, I won't say anything bad about that. Do I think it is going to increase your sales? No. Do I think it does anything helpful for you? No. <laughs> so if you want to do it because you feel like it and it brings you joy to share other people's closets and, you know, the golden rule and all those kinds of things, then fine. Don't not do it. This is this is your business. You can do it however you want. But do I think that that is something that is going to serve your business well? No, I think it takes time away from other things that you could be doing. And I think you need to put your oxygen mask on before you put on somebody else's oxygen mask. And so if you're not sharing your own items enough, you shouldn't be sharing other people's. If you're not listing enough, you shouldn't be sharing other people's. If you're not relisting, sending out offers, sourcing better items, doing research, steaming things, improving your photos, you know, all of the things, you shouldn't be sharing other people's items. So that's my little rant on that. Um, let's see. So followers, you're at 86,000 followers I had here to 72 following. So that shows me that you're not going crazy trying to follow a million people just so you get followers. So that's good. You're not wasting your time on that. If you ever do, because I'm one of those people, I've said this before, like sometimes I just want a mindless task. Sometimes I just want to turn my brain off, watch TV and click some buttons. And sometimes that means sharing my closet. And sometimes that means following people because sometimes I like to go in and follow the new followers. Like, Again, it's your business, do what makes you happy, but don't fool yourself into thinking that you are doing something super productive for your business by doing these kinds of mindless tasks like community sharing and following other people. So last active, when I checked, you were recently active within the hour. So that's good. Let's go ahead and click on that. I'm sure it was probably still the case. Yep, last active this hour, so that's great. So your love notes um, in quantity and quality seem good. You've gotten over 100 of them, so that is great, and they seem to be very nice. Your average ship time is perfect. It's one day. Can't get too much better than that. Um, so nice job on getting your packages out quickly, and that is so wonderful. That lets people know that you are there, you are active, you will ship actively, and so they should have confidence if they checked those stats in buying from your closet, which will serve you well. 
posher since August of 2014. That's amazing. So you've been poshing longer than me, which the more I do these closet reviews, many, many people have been poshing longer than me. But we all know everyone can open up their account and then not touch it for two years. Or you can open up your account, be active, drop it off for a little while, come back. So, I mean, the history doesn't really mean anything. It's nice to see who are maybe some of the OGs on the app or something, but honestly, I look more when I'm a buyer at the love notes, at the average ship time, and if they were active this hour. Those things are more telling to me than how long the person had an account for, because that doesn't really say anything about their selling history. So, mm on that. I mean, it's good for you. I'm just saying in general, that as an indicator is, you know, isn't that much. Closet signs. I didn't see any closet signs, not one closet sign to be found in your closet. So that's a big thing for me. I mean, it could just be me, but I really feel like everyone should have a bookmark sign. I wish that there was something kind of built in. You know, I know they have the about the posher and maybe that's what Poshmark intended that to be, but not many people keep it at the front of their closet. Um, you could certainly utilize your about the posher listing for your closet bookmark. I like having my own, so I did put a link to mine in here so you could take a look. I also put um, some information about how you could make your own through a video that I made with some apps that's very easy to make a little graphic that you can call your closet bookmark sign and it should just live at the top of your closet right where this white dress is and that's like your welcome sign that's the front door to your business that's the welcome sign that says hi i'm open it it lets people know what to expect from your closet it lets them be able to easily come back to your closet again and find you again and you can put whatever you want in there that you ship the same next day that you like offers all that kind of stuff so i think you should have at very minimum a closet sign then if you run any sales or promotions, you could make a sign for that. Or if there's anything else you want to tell people, some people have extra signs that say, I love offers. There's all kinds of stuff you can make a sign for. And in the Etsy shop, I do have several bundles for Poshmark closet signs. And I also have an ideas and inspiration list. If you know how to make your own and you just want some ideas for signs that you could make, I have a whole list on that just as a resource. Um, so for product, mix, brand, and size. So, or yeah, brand and size. So in general, I think we have to work on our sourcing um, because I, as I scrolled through, we'll talk about visual presentation, you know, shortly. But as far as brand and size, there was nothing but maybe a handful of items that really jumped out at me like, oh, that's a great piece. You know, I'm glad she has her. Oh, that's something I would like to put in my closet. Now, that doesn't mean that you won't make sales. That doesn't mean that you can't make a lot of sales. It just means that at first glance, I did not see a lot of items that I thought, in my opinion, were highly desirable. It felt like these were just things that you were able to come across. And don't get me wrong, I have probably had a closet like that when I first started. And I'm not saying that you first started because you've been doing this a while, but I do think that you, I don't know what the, the answer is as to why this is, but it, it seems to me when I look at it that it's just a little bit of everything. Um, and there's nothing wrong with a little bit of everything, but obviously you want to increase your sales. And so you've purchased a closet review to see what areas you can improve upon. And one of those is what brands you're carrying and what items within those brands you're carrying and what is the style and is it current and all of the things that go into it. And we'll talk about um, item type and style here in a second. But as far as brands go, there were definitely recognizable brands but there were definitely a lot of lower end brands. Forever 21, I mean, Black Lace Dress Speechless, R&K Original, I mean, there's a lot. Now these could be things where you had it, it was yours, you added it in. We all buy all kinds of stuff, and so we have lots of things. But if you're purposefully going out and thrifting items and paying, you know, several dollars per item for some of these, then you really wanna be careful and make sure that it's something that is going to be highly sought after enough to get purchased because after you've done all of this work of sourcing it, maybe doing a little cleanup on it, photographing it, listing it, etc., you want to make sure it's worth it. You don't want to just pick up everything and anything. So, you know, there's just a lot of like this 
uh, Tadashi Soji, that's great. I mean, that's a great brand. Hopefully you can get more than $40 for that. Um, we'll talk about pricing in a second. I didn't notice that on my first time around. Um, you know, but then you have Morona and you have Talbots and a lot of Talbots is great, but that Talbot seems a little bit dated. So there's just a lot of factors that go into sourcing. And I think the more you do this, you'll probably know, I usually allude to it at the end, but let your solds be your guide. What's selling for you at good prices? Do more of those. <laughs> Don't just put anything in your store. Try to work on some restraint. Don't buy these things. Don't put them in your store, even if they come to you cheap, because they are just going to drag everything down. So you spend time sharing it, you spend time listing it, you spend time storing it in space. And I just don't think that all of these things need to be in your closet. Um, that's my opinion. I hope that wasn't too harsh, but I do think, you know, uh, I put here, build your brand knowledge by watching haul videos, what sold videos, checking solds on Poshmark to get some brands on your radar. And I put having a mix of low, medium, and high-end brands is great to help you cater to more customers. But within even those lower-end brands, I think it has to be pretty recent, pretty trendy, pretty stylish for you to make that lower-end brand worth selling. Um, challenge yourself to find the higher end brands that can sell for $50. I don't know what sourcing is like in your area. And that's why most of the time I don't talk too much about sourcing because it is different for everyone. What you can get, you know, is different than what I can get and what someone else can get. So I do just think though, that you do have the ability to not buy. And so don't, when you pick something up, make sure it's a good one and don't just put anything in. Sometimes it's about, I think I did an Instagram post on this a long time ago, like it's about what you leave behind sometimes and not about what you actually buy. Because if you buy everything, then you're going to have everything in your store and that's not always helpful. As far as product mix, oh, and size, you had a variety of sizes, so I thought that was great. Um, product mix, item type, and style. So in general, some of the styles looked more dated, not current. So I would consider researching brands that you'd like to sell and then reviewing their websites from time to time to see what's current over time so that you get an idea of trending styles. I watch some videos on YouTube about, you know, trends. I don't always take all of them to, you know, heart because Honestly, I feel like anybody could say anything is a trend. Who knows what they're consulting and what have you. And some of the like high fashion stuff is a little bit whatever. But it's about how, how the more common brands and mall brands adapt the high fashion trends to the regular clothing that people purchase or like ready to wear or whatever they call it. So um, I think just trying to be more mindful of style. I'm not the best style picker, but I think I've done enough editing now of myself and the things that I've bought that if it seems dated, I don't buy it. If I'm not sure if it is, I try not to buy it. Um, if it's a good brand that's selling, you know, for a decent amount, I do buy it, but I don't buy H&M anymore. I don't buy Gianni Beanie anymore. I don't buy Charlotte Russe. I don't buy Liz Claiborne. I don't buy Morona. Um, I don't buy BKE, you know, Express I do, Cynthia Rowley sometimes, American Eagle sometimes, R&K Originals I would not buy. So there's just a lot in here where, for where I'm at in my reselling business, I wouldn't purchase these things. I don't see the value there for all of the work that you do on these items, a Forever 21 sweatshirt, you know, um, I just don't, or not sweatshirt, sweater, I just don't think you should buy those. So that's my opinion on that. I hope, again, like I say, it's not it's not too harsh because this may be only what you can find, in which case, if you can buy it for a dollar and sell it for 10, who's to say that that's not a good game plan? But if you're looking to increase your sales, these are some of the ways that I would see that happen for you. I didn't see any prohibited items. I don't even know if I should be saying this anymore. Like, is stuff not prohibited? <laughs> I don't even know. They keep adding markets. So I don't know if that even matters anymore. So photos presentation, let's talk about this because this is another key area. So right here, we can see several presentations going on in your cover photo. We've got a mannequin with like the windows behind it. We've got a mannequin in a different area with no windows behind it, though possibly the same room. We've got the mannequin with the um, paneling, brick, whatever behind it. Then we've got the floor shot, which I'm very anti the floor shot. Then we have some edited photos. Then we've got probably some sort of white wall maybe, but it wasn't taken in square mode. So then you also have the black behind it. 
Then you have this one with the white brick behind it, but you're not really taking it straight on. And so now you see the wall too. Then over here, you got another floor shot. And then over here, you have a different mannequin situation. It's a lot going on here. Um, and I am a terrible, terrible person because for me, I like this. I like white space. I like clean and clear. I like not a lot of busyness. I like for things to be simple and know exactly what I'm buying and not have so much for my eyeballs to look at because my brain is scrambled enough as it is. <laughs> and so when things get too busy, I shut down. I, if I were shopping and I clicked into your closet, I wouldn't continue to scroll. This is too much for me. It's a lot of stimulation and I don't know what to make of it all. I really don't. Um, I'm not saying anything terrible about what any person can do with their business because we all start from somewhere. So this isn't meant to be derogatory. It's just meant to be completely honest as a potential buyer on Poshmark. I mean, I am a buyer on Poshmark, but also as a seller, I really think you need to think about those kinds of things because there's lots of people like me out there that just won't go any further because of something. Maybe it's that it's the way one photo looks. Maybe it's that the closet seems overwhelming. Maybe it's they see it on the floor. They say, nope, I'm not dealing with somebody that has it on the floor, even though all the rest of your items are not on the floor. Like it, you never know what somebody's deal breaker is. And for me, it's around white space. <laughs> like if anybody has watched these closet reviews long enough for me, you know, like I've kind of mentioned it almost in every single one because it's just, I don't know. It's just such a big thing. So here you have, you know, you've probably edited the background on this and on this one, the DKNY and the vintage coat. And then the other one is a stock photo. Like if you could get more of them to look like that, where you're doing this photo, you're using photo room to edit and you're cutting it out a little bit. So that's great. Um, you know, so you don't see the photo. And honestly, if it, if it showed on there, that would be the least of the problems. Um, I think that's more the direction for you. Cause I would say, your photos were bright. It's not a lighting issue. There was a handful. These are probably your very old ones where they're on the back of a door. Um, there's a few dark photos, but in general, your photos are bright. So it's not a lighting issue. It's a cover shot presentation issue. Find one spot and work there. That spot, whether it's this, um, you know, brick thing that you have, the white brick. Let's click in here this white brick so we have to figure this out because you have it behind it but not completely behind it where it's fitting into your photo so I don't know what's the point of having it there when I can still see everything else around it you might as well not do it like let's say you said I have zero white walls which is fine many of us don't have any white walls I'm not gonna hang up white photo paper on my wall and that I'm not going to do any of that. Wherever this brown room is, then use the brown wall. I mean, if it's not white, that's fine. But have it be clean, clear, and consistent across all of your things. Because when you see the closet all together, and I'm not saying most people don't even see all of your closet all together. Most people are seeing one item, they buy that one item, and they move on. But when you do scroll through your whole closet, I mean, it is an assault to my senses. It really is. It's too much for me to deal with. Um, you got to clean it up. Now, if it's not white, that's okay. If it's that brown room, that's fine. Just find one wall where you can take photos where nothing else is in that photo. That's what we need. Not sideways white brick, not artwork behind it, not, you know, other pillow on the floor, see the carpet none of that stuff. One wall, that is plain. Doesn't matter what color, preferably white. If you don't have white, I have white photo paper linked down below. It's $40 or 30 something dollars for one roll. All you ever need is one roll. Hang it up with some removable tape. I have a whole video on it. Now all of a sudden you have a white wall. <laughs> That's all you need to do. And you can make any wall a white wall by just hanging up some white paper. Um, and it does the trick and then you're still photo editing and I still photo edit and, and it just makes everything clean and clear and not busy and not distracting and makes everything look a little bit more presentable and as close to these stock photos as you could possibly get. So 
it doesn't even matter whether you do a hanging, you know, whether you hang a hanger on the wall or whether you do the mannequin in front, whichever presentation you like, that's fine. Do whatever. Just make sure it is a clean, clear, plain wall that looks consistent across your items. Once you get that figured out and jam on all of that with your new listings going forward, then you can decide if it's worth to go back and change any of your old ones. For a lot of these items for the low dollar amounts, $10, $11, I mean, I would, I would say if it's $20 and higher, it might be worth your time to go back and fix the cover photo. If it's $20 and lower, or $19 and lower, I wouldn't go back and fix it. And you can determine if you want to sell those off, remove them from your closet, do a big clearance, whatever you want to do. But I would focus on your new listings going forward, having a system for a clean, clear background, and then decide to go back and fix up those, you know, maybe you start with over $100 items. Once those are done, then over $50 items, then over $20 items. So everything is backlog cleaned up. And then you decide from there what you want to do. That was a long time on that. I apologize. But it's not so much about your format as it is the overall presentation of that format. And I thought it looked like you took care of the items. None of them were hanging there haphazard. None of them looked, you know, unkempt. They all looked fine. So it's not a matter of that. It's just a matter of getting a systematic, consistent background going on. Okay. Uh, and I put, search for one of your own items like a buyer and see how it looks in comparison to the other listings that come up alongside it in search. I highly encourage you to do this. Search for white lace H&M skirt. What else is going on in other people's listings like yours? Then I would search for one of your higher end items and see how those look. Because the lower end items you'll find often are sometimes the photos with all the problems. And when it's when you get to the higher end items that you want it to look like the amount you're charging for it. So that's enough on that. Like I said, photo lighting was good. You know, and if the issue is you're trying to be where the window is to give you the light, then consider getting the light kit so that you can freely move about your house to find that perfect spot because then you won't be tied to a window anymore. Okay. Number of photos, details, and tags. You should, there are a couple of items where I thought you should take more photos. Not all of them, but let's go back because the, well, oh, for God's sake. I thought it was at the top before when I looked at it. Where's that white dress? Mm -hmm. Here we go. White aqua smocked lace trim mini dress Mio. Um, you have no actual photo of the item. So that's a problem because if I'm going to give you 62 of my dollars for this dress, I want to know that I'm getting this dress. I want to see what the actual white dress looks like. I don't want to see that lady in the dress. That might catch my eye to let me click on the listing. But now that I'm here, I want to see the white dress that you have. <laughs> what is it going to look like when you send it to me? Um, so, you know, we're just talking still about photos, but I need to see the actual item here when you include stock photos. The other thing was, oh, it was Karen Kane. Let's see if it's down here. Sorry to waste time. It's just, here we go. Um, I just knew because I saw them on certain listings. So I'd rather go back to that certain listing than try to find an example of that on another listing, which I might not. So you've got the stock photo. Great. Draws me in. Then I see the back. Then I see the tag. Okay. Then I see this close up of the tag. Then I see another stock photo. Then I see a close up of the fur trim. Then another stock photo. It's only until I scroll all the way down to the last photo that I see the overall shot of the whole thing. Now, I do a different order. Maybe this is fine for you. You want to show details up front, but I don't think that's the right way to do it. I think, you know, put a stock photo for the cover, but then the next photo is usually always either the back stock photo and then this shot, the full frontal, then some details of the front and the tags and then the back. But I don't even think you have a picture of the actual back. So for all I know, you only show me the stock photo of the back. The back of this could have a hole in it. The back of this could have a stain on it. I don't know what you're hiding from me because you haven't showed me that you're not hiding something. I think that's the big thing with photos. It's not so much 
that a buyer needs to see every inch of the thing, they know what it is. It's not like, oh, I don't know what this sweater is, what surprise could be there. It's more about, I want to make sure that you're going to sell me the sweater that I think that I'm getting by looking at the front of this. So if you're not showing me the back, that makes me think something's wrong with the back that you don't want to show me. And I'm sure just going through your closet, I'm pretty sure you're not trying to hide anything from someone, but you don't know how many buyers you may have lost because you didn't show them the back. You didn't show them that you're not hiding anything. And so people that have been burned will go through this, say, she's not showing me everything. What's going on with the back? What isn't she saying? And I would click off of this. So you don't know. You don't know what baggage is in the person's head based on their prior purchases or misconceptions or whatever to know that they don't trust you yet. And there's nothing, there's nothing against you personally. It's, but you haven't given them every reason not to not trust you. So my saying is always give them every reason to buy, give them no reasons not to buy. Right now you're giving her a reason not to buy by not showing the back. And again, I'm not saying you're hiding anything at all, but I'm saying to me as a buyer, I'm thinking the worst of you. And so until you prove me wrong and show me otherwise, I'm going to think that something is wrong here. So that was another long-winded thing, but I haven't really made that point in a while about showing all the photos. So I do think that that's important. Pricing overall, I thought, I thought your pricing was pretty good. I mean, there's a couple things that are a little too high, a couple things that maybe are a little too low. Like that Karen Kane, I think could be lower. The Tadashi Soji dress, I think could probably be a little bit higher. You know, it's always a wash that way. But as long as you are leaving room for offers and closet clear out and whatever you work into your business model. If you do closet clear out, you're going to be dropping prices. If you are wanting to accept offers and send out offers, you have to have that built in. If you run sales from time to time, you need to have that built in. So just kind of keep that in mind as you're doing your pricing so that you don't sell yourself short and you don't overprice for no reason. Titles. So in general, I thought many titles were fine, but I did think that there were a good amount of titles that were a little bit short and too simple. I thought that you could definitely add more keywords to your format and formula to create a good title. So things like color, fabric, details or embellishments, length, size, like go the extra mile. And I kind of say it in title, but it could also go for description as well, which we'll talk about. So let's see if we have an example. Uh, Carmen Mark Valvo sweater size medium. So you took up a lot of characters in the prime real estate of that title to say size medium the way you did um, and didn't say anything else about the color, the print, the fabric, the length, neckline and sleeve length, anything like that. Now, here we go, you know, into the description. There's more that can be done here as well. So we'll keep on this. But as far as the title goes, you could take out medium and write M. You could take out size and write S, Z, or not write anything at all. Technically, you don't even maybe need to have medium because it's going to pull up from the size field. So you could have put, I would say that this is like an animal print. I don't know, maybe it's an abstract something, but I would say animal print. Sweater, asymmetrical hem, looks like half sleeves or three quarter sleeves. Uh, nothing to speak about on the on the fabric. I wouldn't get into that. It's rayon and whatever. Uh, I want to see if it was, you know, a, a fabric that you'd like to highlight, like linen and wool and merino wool and silk and cashmere and things like that. So, yes. Is it? No, I don't know. It looked like maybe like metallic, you know, that might be a word that you want to use because you have... It was very hard to get a good photo of the gold for some reason, so we'll talk about that in a second. So for title, consider adding more keywords that can help your item get pulled up in search and accurately describe your item. There. Description length. Simple descriptions are great, but consider adding additional keywords that are searchable so that you can attract additional buyers. So same thing. Because on Poshmark, the title and description are both searchable, you have all the characters in the world that they give you there to just put in as many keywords that make sense to help your item get found in search. That's the thing that works while you sleep. Because when you share, you have to share it. If you don't share your item, it's not going to be out there in search. But having more and more keywords that are accurate. That makes sense. Don't just throw things in there that don't make sense. Accurate keywords help your items sell while you sleep. 
because if somebody's looking for an animal print half sleeve asymmetrical hem sweater, which that girl's out there, <laughs> you know, your sweater is going to pull up if you have all those things. But let's look. You don't have asymmetrical hem. You don't have half sleeves. Metallic, you don't have. Um, what else did I say before? Uh, scoop neck, crew neck. No. So, and you don't have it as a category either. So it's not going to pull up from the category. One way I would say is, you know, you don't have to write crew neck if that's what you selected in the category, but you didn't put it in the category. So now here's another point. When you don't include the subcategory, you are allowing your item to stay in a wider pool because now somebody that is looking for crew neck sweaters and clicks the crew neck subcategory will not see your item because they said crew and you don't show up in crew. Now if somebody just searches sweaters, you'll show up because you've marked it as a sweater, but nothing further. But think of how many items are marked as sweaters more in a bigger pool. And so now you're in really a big C and then you can't go off of the keywords because you don't have them in there. So yikes, that's a problem. I don't know how this is ever going to get found. <laughs> I'm being dramatic. But yes, I mean, think about it like that. Use those subcategories. Those are bonus keywords for you. And then also include those keywords so that your item can get found more times. The Etsy shop has a keyword list. I did a video on all of my keyword strategy. There's going to be something new coming out very soon with all of that going on. So just um, really try to focus on the keywords. Should, should I bring more water in here? No, I did not. Okay, I'm parched. Uh, description format. Consider making a small template or form for yourself that you can use over and over, copy and paste to keep your information for the description so you don't forget to enter any key information and keeps it consistent and clear for your buyer. I'm a big proponent of the listing template. Now, you have put on most of your listings, because now I've clicked into several at this point, in most of your listings, you have hit on major themes, condition, um, measurements, a couple of key words, you know, generally speaking, but on every single one, something is left out. You don't hit all the cylinders in every single listing. And I think if you had a listing template, you would, because the template is what reminds you to put everything into there. So even if you had a checklist or something that you just, did I put condition? Did I put all these kinds of keywords? Did I put um, some buyer confidence information? Did I put this? And that way you can go down the line and make sure that you're including everything. So EUC, no, 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 excellent use condition. You know what that means, but new person, first time buying on Poshmark has no idea what that means. Take that out, write out, excellent condition. Now what I say is excellent condition, no flaws. Of course, if there's no flaws. So that way it lets them know it's excellent condition, which already gives them one level of an idea but it's still kind of subjective. Now I say with no flaws, boom, I've said it. I've told you there's no flaws here. I'm telling you there's no flaws. So if you find a flaw, then that would be my fault. And that person could bring a case against me, therefore giving them a little bit of buyer confidence to know that it's in their favor. So EUC, no good. Only worn a couple of times. If it's yours and you've only worn it a couple of times, that's fine. I have no problem with that. I don't think it does much. Um, I don't think it does much. I think saying excellent condition, no flaws will tell them that it's excellent condition, no flaws. And you saying EUC only worn a couple times doesn't tell me how you wore it when you wore it, that it was only a few times. Did you get a flaw on it when you wore it only a couple of times? It doesn't tell me anything. Um, so moving on, it is black and sparkly gold. So you're writing in sentences and sentences are fine, but being so conversational, I don't think helps. I don't think it does anything for the listing. I don't think it helps do anything to make it sell. If you wrote a sentence that said, this excellent condition with no flaws, black sparkly gold sweater will be perfect for the holiday season. If you wrote that kind of a sentence, then sure, sentence away. <laughs> If you're just saying it is black and sparkly gold, you used a lot of characters that didn't really give your listing any oomph to, to result in a sale. So black is fine and sparkly gold, okay, but they're also getting black and gold from the color fields. Um, another 
you know, you could use sparkly, but also metallic is another good keyword that would kind of coincide with that. It was very hard to get a good photo of the gold for some reason. Again, I don't need you to tell me a whole story about the thing. I just need you to either give a good photo or don't give a good photo. Tell me if it's in good condition. Tell me about it so I can find it in search. I don't need all the other shenanigans. Um, it doesn't do anything for you. It doesn't do anything for you. Great quality. Also useless. Heavy, stretchy, awesome. Okay, so heavy, thick, things like that, I've used that. You know, I usually say something like thick and warm, um, things like that to just give them an idea that there's some weight to it, something like that. So I think heavy is fine. Stretchy, okay, people like to know if they're stretching it. You can also always know depending on what the fabric content is here. Um, so other fiber, you know, it's going to have that, you know, stretch to it because it's knit, but you don't even have knit in there. And then dot, 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 awesome, you know, okay. <laughs> You, if you say so. <laughs> so, you know, I, again, none of this, this is all meant with love. <laughs> this is not meant to be a Poshmark tough love, but I do just want to bring home the point for you and for those watching that you can put a lot of stuff in your listing and none of it will help it sell. And then you can leave out a lot of stuff that would help it sell. And I think this is a good, good example of something like that because there's lots more keywords that people are looking for. Tunic length, it looks like it's long. Oh, and then we didn't even get to measure. Oh my God, okay. We need to move on, I'm talking too much. So I hope that makes sense on, you know, keywords, things like that. Then we talked about excellent condition. Okay, so on some items, I was glad to see measurements because I wrote that, glad to see measurements. <laughs> but then the, some of the more recent listings had the measurements, but then they were kind of written in a funny way. So we'll see if we can find an example of that. But here we have no measurements. And Carmen Mark Valvo is a great, you know, brand. You can find it in department stores. It, and, you know, it's debatable on the resale value of it. I haven't had too much luck with it, but it is a nice, you know, I've seen their pieces. They're very nice. Um, so it may not be a brand that someone has worn before. And so they don't know what their size is. It's a different thing than American Eagle jeans. They probably know what their size is. But a Carmen Mark Valvo asymmetrical, what looks like tunic, tunic length sweater for additional coverage I won't know. You didn't give me any measurements. I have no idea how long it is. If it's going to cover my butt, maybe I'm a little self-conscious and I only like things to cover my butt. You never know what's going on in the person's mind. So you need to give them measurements. And so, yes, you need to add measurements. That's important. I know that you had it in some other listings, so it's not like you're not doing it at all. But in the other listings, you wrote pit to pit, which is i not a fan of pit to pit. If you're going to write it, you write armpit to armpit or chest you know, across or laying flat, something like that. I just pit to pit sounds terrible. And um, you wrote it out like a sentence and you didn't have like the punctuation that goes along with like inches with the quotation or writing out inches. So it just said like 15 and it, it was just kind of written in a way where I wasn't a fan of it. It did not look as presentable. So I don't know. I don't remember what one it was. You might be sharing right now. I don't know what one it was. So let's not waste time trying to find it. But so take a look at how you're presenting the measurements. Um, description, buyer info. Okay, so there's no buyer confidence line and that's fine. A lot of people don't have it. This is one of my big things. In your description, you can add just a very small line at the end that you can copy and paste that says, heart for price drops, offers welcome, ship same next day, professional seller. I forget what else I put in there, but it's a line. I don't even write it. That's why I don't, know what it says off the top of my head because I just have text replacements that puts it in every time. But I do think that it is worth having because if you have it in your closet bookmark sign, if you have it in your information line in your banner, then you have it at the end of every listing, which the person hopefully will read that description, though we know they don't always. So if you have this buyer confidence line, you'll be able to showcase to your potential buyers that they should feel safe and feel secure in buying from you, have the confidence to make the purchase from you, and just overall make them feel good about the transaction. So it's one of those things where do you have to have it? No. Will you make sales without it? Sure. But I do think that there's a contingent of people out there that would be more likely to purchase from you 
being able to read those kinds of words and information about the buying experience with you. So I encourage you to, I linked the video where I talked about boosting buyer confidence and what I say in my line, so I have that for you. As far as your solds, let's go check out your solds real quick. I've been saying, let your solds be, what am I doing? Um, it's not over there. Let your solds be your guide. So let's see some of the things that you recently sold. So Under Armour for $10, a dress on the floor for $13, see a Raffaella new with tag sweater for $49 with the stock photo, take a look at that, that's great. Um, Cynthia Rowley cardigan for $12, LuLaRoe for $9, Calvin Klein for $9, I mean some of these are not surprising to me, the Eileen Fisher for $100, great job, that's awesome. But see, I mean $28 for the Not Your Daughter's Jeans. Mud Pie is such a shame. It's such a nice, you know, higher-end brand, and it doesn't go for much. It's a bummer. Free People, 68 with the stock photo, and that it's Free People, and it looks like it's more current. It was new with tags. Yep. So, I mean, you can see here, like, a, a Calvin Klein blazer. That's a $20 sale. Um, new with tags, tunic blouse, from, well, from Worthington. So, that's an $8 sale. I mean, you can see here, just from your own solds, where you should be focusing your attention. Now, if you're somebody that says, hey, I'm just getting rid of some stuff and I'm happy to sell this silk cardigan for $14, then that's fine. If you're fine to go after the $14 sale, then go after the $14 sale and keep doing those kinds of things. But if you want to increase your sales in dollar amount or in number, having more desirable things like this, you know, not your daughter's jeans and the free people sweater and, um, you know, even this Raffaella sweater for $49, the Eileen Fisher, you know, those kinds of things are the things that people are looking for. They want, they'll buy it over something else. And so having those brands and those newer styles and new with tags will get you the higher sale. Having an item of substance like a blazer will get you a higher sale than just a t-shirt. So thinking about all those kinds of things will let your souls guide you in the right direction. Um, last shared. So let's go back to, you must be sharing now because every time I look, it's changed. So yeah, you've updated that 36 seconds ago. Lane Bryant top. Okay. I'm not going to look at the other things and I'll just start talking about them. And now I did notice on, there was two or three unanswered questions, at least one that I can think of. And then there were some where I saw the questions, but I didn't see if there was an answer or not because I was going fast. So someone had asked for a chest measurement and you did not answer them. Now it's only recently that Poshmark filtered out um, how you can see comments and things like that. We've all missed a comment from time to time. It happens. Maybe it's a person <laughs> You know, that asked you a million questions. So you said, that's it. I'm not dealing with you. There could be a number of reasons why you chose not to answer that question. But if it's, I choose not to answer questions because I can't be bothered, even though I didn't put the measurements in to begin with, then you shouldn't be worried about all these other things to increase your sales if you're not going to do the basic thing that is answer the question timely, professionally, politely, and with the information they need. And better yet, Put the measurements in there to begin with and they won't have to ask you so that hits on two things one unanswered questions and two give them the measurements up front and they won't have to ask you now that doesn't mean they won't ask you sometimes people ask you anyway but then you can just passive aggressively refer to them back to the listing <laughs> that's what i do um so bundle discount you have a 10 percent bundle discount which is good i like 20 percent. it's off of two items so that's good i think that can constitutes a bundle so two items is good um, but I do think it should be 20% many many people do not get out of bed for a 10% sale so I think 20% um, is nice so now we're at final impressions which I like to read because I put the thought into it before of what I wanted to say so I'll read it here um, overall I think you have a closet that has a lot of areas for improvement but that's great news if you are um, if you are not where you want to be sales wise, because that means you can only increase your sales with these improvements. Sourcing, photos, and listing description are the three main areas you can focus on improving. Be consistent with your photos, create a listing template, and source more desirable items, and things will certainly improve in your sales. You have all the basics, you just need to level up in these areas, and I'm sure you will see more success. So we talked in detail about a lot of things. 
I think you can get into the nitty gritty on all of those things. But when you roll it back up to the higher level, it's photos, it's listing description, and it's sourcing. So you can decide to attack all three of those things at the same time. You could focus on one and then move on to the next, whatever works for you. You can focus on the new things going forward with these improvements and not worry about the old stuff. However you want to handle it, don't let it be overwhelming to you. But I think it's great news because you can easily improve on a lot of these things. We've talked about it all here. And if you're a person that executes, which, you know, having 800 listings in your Poshmark closet is no small feat. It looks like you have done a lot of work. So I don't think that you're a person that won't execute on this. But I do think that you need to kind of not be in just your own little world of what you think you want to put in your closet or how you think you want to write the description and start thinking about it from the buyer's perspective. And that's where a lot of, you know, some of these criticisms come into play because I'm thinking about it as a buyer and saying, what about this? And that's what led to all of these, you know, kind of critiques and criticisms in this closet review today. So again, Brandy, thank you so much. I felt like this was a long one. I feel like I talked for forever. Thank you for purchasing. I really hope you can put these into practice and it brings you much, much success in sales for everyone that is watching. Hope you enjoyed this video and it gave you some tips to work on as well. If you want your own custom closet review, check out the description below for the Etsy shop so you can get one. I will see you in the next video video, like and subscribe, and leave me a comment on the way out. Thanks so much, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye!